All right, you guys, we are here at part two. Now we're going to be doing the siding of the chair, the oversized armchair, okay? If you are lost, please check the description box. There will be a link to part one, okay? And you'll see where this part came from. Well, this panel right here, okay? So we're gonna take this panel, repair the cardboard. I was gonna cut out a whole new piece of cardboard, but eh, we're, we're trying to be a little bit lazy here, okay? The, the, the painter's tape did the trick. All right, the batting that's on this cardboard is actually in really, really good condition, so I'm going to be reusing it, and I will be cutting out a new piece of fabric to cover this area. So I'm going to go in, you know, kind of get an average size of how much fabric I need, then go in with the old panel and see what, you know, kind of shape I have to cut out, okay? Always try to give yourself an extra couple of inches, okay? Try not to cut it like perfect to the exact size of the original piece of fabric because sometimes, you know, the original piece of fabric may have some stretch in it and the new fabric you're using may not have stretch in it, okay? So, you know, keep that in mind. The fabric I'm using is from a company called E Luxury Supply. So um, I'll put the link down below to the fabric. This is a special fabric just for pets. Well, not just for pets, but it's definitely something for a busy household. Super, super easy to clean, you guys. Way better than the suede that I got. The suede that I did in that first, my first upholstery video needs to completely be replaced because the dog... The husband, the cat completely messed it up. All right, so here I'm, you know, just sizing up my panel that I cut out, just trying to see if it looks good. So here we're going to do our invisible staple trick, okay? And this is something people who do couches, they do this themselves because some of these chairs that I've taken apart, they've done the exact same thing I've done. So it's not anything, you know okay, I'm doing something random and it's not right. You know what I mean? So as usual, take your time, you know, just pay attention to what you're doing. And remember those preference pictures I told you to take in the first video, part one of this video. So when you take the couch or chair or whatever piece of upholstered furniture that it is that you're working on, take some preference pictures so that you can go back and look at it and see exactly how the fabric was stapled on to the piece, okay? So as you guys can see here, I'm stapling it on um, on the inside part of the fabric, and then it's gonna be folded over to give us that seamless look. But I'm putting it on the front part of the, I, I guess, arm there first, and then I'll fold it over. So you'll see right now. And then it will curve under the arm. See what I mean? So it kind of creates like a little seam, okay? So that's how it's supposed to look. I'm pretty sure you won't have the same exact chair. And if you do, you know, this is gonna be a lot more helpful to you. But if you have a different type of chair, it's almost the same thing. Just look at the way they put your chair together. Look at the way they stapled on the fabric, how they laid the fabric and how they folded it over, okay? So I put another staple there, pr pretty much an anchor staple just to hold it in place. Then I'm gonna go in and staple it down all the way across as close as I can up underneath the arm and the headrest part of the chair. Make sure you check your staples as well. You know, go back and forth and make sure that you have it up enough. I'm pushing my staple gun up. I don't know if you can see that, but I am pushing it up so that I can have the seam staple down closer to the curve underneath the um arm part you see you see what I mean that curve right there between the arm and the back part of the chair so yeah just pushing up the staples is gonna get it close enough so that I have the seamless look like it was stitched on so this is like an underside view so you guys could see how it looks I'm sorry if it's a bit shaky but this is how it looks okay so now 
we're gonna go and check and make sure that we don't need any more staples if we do I'll go back in and smooth it out and put some more staples to make sure that it is smooth without flipping over the fabric this time so I can have a better look at it so me pushing up my staple gun makes the staples um, go up higher on the wood there the frame so this causes the fabric to you know be up closer and higher to that gap right there that curve from the back part of the chair and under the arm part of the chair so you don't see the staples once you're satisfied with it and everything looks good then you can move on to the next step Now we're going to go in with the cardboard and the batting. I'm going to attach the cardboard first and I'm going to put it over that extra piece of fabric that's stapled, you know, when we had to fold the staple. So make sure it's on the fabric, not under it, on it, because if you put it under it, there's going to be a bump, okay? It's going to be a bump that you will be able to see through the fabric once you flip your fabric over. So I'm just putting some anchor staples just to hold the cardboard in place and this is the original cardboard that came with the chair or that came in the chair. And this is the original batting in very good condition, still nice bright and white. You can definitely replace the batting if you feel like that's what you want to do or if it's like brown or has like weird wet mark stains you know what I mean you can definitely replace it so don't think that you have to use the original batting or anything original that's you know removable parts that can easily be replaced so if you want to remove it go right ahead if it makes you feel any better okay but since the batting is in good condition I'm just gonna reuse it it already has the shape it's already cut the size so that makes my life a little bit easier okay so I also put some anchor staples on top of the batting when I put it on top of the cardboard just to hold it in place and then I can flip my fabric over and see exactly how this would look you know give it a little pull you don't you want it nice and tight but not too tight to the point where you're ripping out staples if you know what I mean okay you want it to be tight but not to the point where there's so much tension on a staple that is gonna rip out because if you look at couches there's not a lot of tension on couches there's enough room for you know for people to be able to sit down or walk into it without it feeling like the minute you touch it a staples is gonna pop or a staples is gonna pop a staple is gonna pop almost like a corset that's on too tight you know and you feel like you're gonna bust wide open that's that's think about it like that so don't pull it too tight put it pull it tight enough to smooth out the fabric but don't pull it too tight where you know you can see that the staple is about to rip out you don't want that okay so I'm putting some staples on the bottom part of the fabric while checking it and then I'm gonna start putting the staples on the front part of the fabric where I showed you guys earlier how I folded that inward and then stapled it to create that you know seamless look okay I'm not sure again if you're gonna find a chair just like this but if you do I hope this video helps you a lot this video can be helpful towards you know other pieces of furniture or couches it's very similar to the other couch that I did which I do plan on redoing because the suede that I used on that other couch was not pet friendly or family friendly that fabric is for like couples with no children or single people okay I'm Probably not even for couples or single people because if you plan on eating on that couch, it's going to be really hard trying to clean any stains off of suede. Like, you know, it was like an ongoing battle daily trying to keep that couch clean. And then my husband was on it. The dog was on it. The cat was on it. The kids were on it. I had barbecue stains, yogurt stains, all kinds of stains, drool from the dog. So expect another couch video from me, okay, just so you know. In the future I'm still on the hunt for the perfect fabric I may get this same fabric but a darker color just to you know save myself a lot of cleaning time but so far this fabric I tested it out and it does a really really good job by repelling liquids and stains very easy to clean so we'll see okay 
So now that I have it stapled down in the front part of the arm, I'm going to fold it over and then staple it on. I'm also going to staple down this loose part that I had right here, just in case I needed to redo this section and get it nice and smooth. Hopefully you guys could see my fold over there for the front part of the chair. I think that came out really, really nice and looks super professional. Okay, I know my ways are probably not the pro ways, but never once did I say I was a pro. So there's that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish off stapling down this fabric on the under part of the chair. So the chair has a frame made out of wood, so that's where I'm stapling it onto. And here I am talking to, I don't know who I was talking to, somebody. <laughs> I was probably either on live or talking to one of my YouTube friends about something. All right, so I'm also going to staple the fabric inward here. You're not going to see this part, so don't get all freaked out or anything. You're going to staple it inward just to keep it nice and smooth, okay? Keep it nice and smooth. That is the goal. Now we're going to go ahead and cut out our new piece of back fabric, okay? The fabric that goes on the back part of the chair to cover it. So I'm going to use the original piece. It's already curved and everything, so I'm going to use that as my guide. Pin it down with some of these little, you know, fabric pins hold it in place and try to cut it out as pretty much as perfect as possible. And then I'm going to use this as the back part, the new back part of the chair. So this is one of the reasons why I kept the old parts of, you know, the old pieces of fabric from the chair so I can use them as a guide to cut out new fabric. I did leave on an extra two inches on there. And if you see this little dot right there, that's the center of the fabric. So I put that dot there as a guide to start my stapling. So I'm going to use the dot in the middle part of the chair back where the middle part of the wood frame is. So that's where I'm going to attach that. And this is just going to guide me and make sure that I staple on the fabric, you know, in the right place, in the right shape, because we're going to have to do like a curved angle here. Okay. This one might be a little bit tricky for some of you guys, but you're going to have to like go along with the curve of the chair to get this to look right because it is a curved back and it could be real tricky unless you're working with like super stretchy fabric which this is not super stretchy you know it will be easier with stretchy fabric it will be and they do sell upholstery fabric that has a good amount of stretch in it this one does not but yeah I'll have to curve it myself with my fingers which is fine so just take your time don't rush it also I hope you love my ingenious way of holding up my couch <laughs> or my chair and Jack's here checking on the quality quality control Jack as usual Jack please go okay these cans can't hold the whole living creatures but yeah I use cans of beans to you know get my couch off of the other chairs that it was sitting on so that I'm able to staple underneath the couch okay so that's why those cans are there so here's a closer look at me just like following the curve and, you know, kind of like pulling on the fabric a bit and curving it as I go and stapling it on. All that extra piece of fabric that's there from the back, the inside back part and all of that, just leave that there because you never know if something is going to go wrong and you might have to open up the couch and readjust anything. I'm happy I've never had to do that, but always just leave a little bit of extra. Just like when, you know, you get clothes made or whatever, just leave a little bit of extra room just in case you have to go back in and fix some things, okay? You'll notice that the curve looks a bit tight, so it will be getting tight if you're doing a curve back, just so you know. And this is how it looks. There will be a little space there. Remember, it still has to have the cardboard backing to hold this nice and firm in place and the batting to give it a little bit of, you know, a little bit of cushioning, okay? So I just wanted you guys to see how that looked as I went and, you know, went with the curve, went with the flow of the curve. Okay, so now we're going to go in with the back panel, which is also made out of cardboard and has batting on it. It's in really good condition, so I don't have to replace it. So that makes my life, as always, much easier. Okay, so now we're going to have to slide this underneath the fabric in between 
the fabric that's folded over that's stapled on and the outside part of the fabric I hope you guys are understanding this because you know the way I staple it down it kind of creates like this little pocket so we're gonna try to slide it into that pocket okay and try to see if you can get something maybe like a flat ruler or a really long skinny stick or something to get it up there and smooth it out you'll see me do that um, soon in this video but I tried doing it with my hand and you see how it just kind of slides in there but I had to keep putting my hand in there to smooth it out it did take a couple of tries okay it really did take a couple of tries I kind of wish I had stapled it on as I was going but I figured it would have gotten in the way so I'm pretty sure my brain was doing what it needed to do by not letting me go ahead and do that because I can already see it would have been in the way if I had stapled it on at the same time while trying to staple on the fabric I know you could see that one little staple right there don't worry eventually I do fix that and cover it I didn't see it while I was doing that which is crazy to me but um yeah this is the only video I filmed um, doing this chair so okay so as you guys can see I did take a ruler and I used it to smooth it out and I'm just gonna pull and tuck and just smooth everything out make sure it doesn't look bumpy okay I'm gonna go back in with the ruler and just smooth it out a bit more um, this is the original cardboard from the chair so it does have a slight curve to where the original fabric was curved a little bit pushed all the way up and then curved to co cover the original staples that were there all right you guys so once I get out the extra staples I'm gonna use my head to hold the fabric up while holding the cardboard up so it doesn't slip back down and put some staples on it just to kind of keep it in place these are just anchor staples just to hold the cardboard in place so it doesn't slip back down because I pushed it all the way up as far as I could and now we can start attaching the fabric onto the cardboard okay so just a few more anchor staples there and then we can start attaching the fabric so make sure it's nice and smooth pull it down okay just doing an extra tug here to make sure it's smooth and then pull it down You know, doing chairs, I really feel like it could be super relaxing because you're literally seeing a old piece transform and just kind of be reborn and be a little bit more modern, but still having that, you know, that, that, that character, that older style, but with a modern color. I really love that. You know, I do prefer older pieces rather than new pieces that have super straight clean lines like it, I don't know it just feels super cold to me um, certain things that I'm, I'm okay with but when it's like all over it's just a little too much or not enough if that makes sense so now we're gonna go in with this it's I, I would call this a track like a staple track or a nail track oh my gosh so I just googled I stopped my voiceover and googled to see what this thing is called and I'm right it's called a metal track a metal upholstery track so that's pretty close I was pretty close I did say track okay okay all right so what we're gonna do is push this through the fabric going outward okay so put it on the inside part and push it through and then we're going to fold it over to create a seamless look that's how it was on the original um, old fabric so that's how I'm gonna do it on this one it it it's a really cool thing to do to finish off a piece okay so you just saw me take it back off of the fabric and now I'm redoing it because I want to make sure that it it is aligned with the fabric itself so we want to get it straight but we also want it to go along with the curve of the fabric and since the back is curved it has a slight curve in the fabric so you could see me readjusting it until I get it nice and smooth okay and you pretty much just put a bit of pressure on it and have it you know have the I guess the prongs I want to say or the pointy end bore through the fabric and you're gonna fold it over like this just check it see how it looks make sure you have enough coverage 
space to overlap on the other side of fabric and just see how it looks okay before you you know attach it with your mallet just check it out see how it looks if it's nice and smooth if there's other areas where you need to readjust or pull the fabric or whatever it is that you need to do just always check before you make that you know final contact point basically so it looks pretty good to me I'm gonna go in with my mallet and we're going to hit that in place. You see Jack made himself comfortable. He always needs to be in the way. This is just what he does. Okay. I can move him a million times. He will come back and sit in that same exact spot. I do understand there's people that do not like cats that come on this channel and complain about me having a cat. But this is the thing. It's my home and I like animals sometimes more than people <laughs> because people complain about the most pettiest thing and all my animals want is love a warm place to sleep and food that's it and a clean litter box all right so yes mr jack you know he's got his spot and yeah he's supervising he's making sure you know his mama got everything under control he's basically the supervisor okay quality control supervisor <laughs> All right, so I wasn't liking these little ripples that I was getting right here. So I'm going to readjust the fabric right there, kind of pull it a little bit tighter, and then attach it back in place. It will take a couple of tries to get it nice and smooth, that's for sure. So now I'm going to go in and pull the bottom, and this should smooth everything out. using the same staple gun that I got from Walmart the first upholstery video I did okay and I'm gonna go back in with my mallet just give it a couple of taps make sure it's nice and secure I think I think Jack is happy with the results I think that that's his happy face that's just how he looks alright so this is the other side I wanted to go back in and give it a couple more taps with the mallet get it nice and attached I hope you guys enjoyed it's part two. Part three will have the construction of the new cushion covers. And I think it has the part where I reattached the feet. Not 100% sure. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you all very soon in another video. Part three of this new chair couch cover video. Okay, love you guys. Bye.